Hello everybody, Calamity here, at least that's according to the leaks. Today's video is going to be an updated guide for Dendro Traveler, and this element is considered to be their best element and is very much worth the effort of building. Especially if you're new to Dendro teams, Dendro Traveler can be used in just about any Dendro team comp you're planning to build. From Bloom, uh, Nilo Bloom, Hyper Bloom, Burgeon, Aggravate, Spread, all of it. The reason for this is because Traveler has excellent off-field Dendro application as well as their ability to provide many buffs to their team depending on your weapon choices of course as well as your artifacts. And we're going to cover everything you need to know about how to build Dendro Traveler in the best way possible. We're going to go over their talents, we're going to go over weapons, artifacts, teammates, constellations, and of course a combat showcase at the very end so you can see them in action. And now that being said, let's get started with their talents. Actually, I want to make a quick note about Traveler before we do start talking about their talents. And that is if you have put in the effort to level them to 90, you do not have to level them to 90 every time you change their element. However, you do have to re-level their talents, of course, when you do change their elements. Now with that out of the way, let's actually talk about the talents and what they do. The first one is the normal attack talent. It's called Foreign Field Cleaver. And as you can see, I I've left it at level 1. This is the same exact normal attack talent that you have seen on other Traveler elements. Doesn't matter which one you've, you've had them be as, it's all the same. The way we're building Traveler, we utilize mainly their burst and skill. The normal attack talent isn't needed, so we don't need to level it. And there's no special mechanics about this normal attack talent. So let's just move on to the skill. The elemental skill is called Razor Grass Blade. And you can see mine's at level 10, thanks to a constellation. But this skill is very, very basic, uh, very easy to understand. It is just going to shoot out a bunch of razor sharp leaves that deal dendro damage to your opponents. It's kind of like a shotgun blast sort of with the spread. It actually does do quite a bit of damage. The skill multiplier at level 10 is 415%. And it does have a cooldown of 8 seconds. What's not listed here is that when you do use the elemental skill, uh, it does generate anywhere from 2 to 3 particles, which is actually really nice. Next up, we have Surgent Manifestation. This is the burst. And it has quite a lot of text here, but let's, uh, let's try to shorten it down and condense it for you here. Traveler is going to summon what's called a Leah Lotus Lamp. Now we're just going to call this the Lamp for short. And it's going to deal Dendro damage to opponents within its AoE. Now the next part of it is what's called the Lotus Light Transfiguration. What this means is that when the Lamp comes into contact with either Hydro, Electro, or Pyro, a different effect is going to occur. So if it interacts with Hydro, it's going to increase the AoE of your lamp as well as the AoE of its attacks. What's not listed here is that you'll also do a bloom reaction and it's going to create a dendro core. Next up is Electro. This is going to increase the attack speed of the lamp. Pyro is going to make it so that the lamp will explode after a short delay and deal a bunch of AoE dendro damage. Now keep in mind only one transfiguration can be active on the lamp at a time. So you cannot do Hydro and Electro for faster attacks and bigger AoE. That would be uh, too strong, I suppose. And if we quickly look at the skill attributes, we can see that the explosion damage is pretty high uh, at 761.5% at level 11. However, it should be noted that the fire uh, transfiguration is the least used version and the one we're not looking for uh, when using Dendro Traveler. Uh, we can also see that the cooldown is quite hefty at 20 seconds and it does have quite a big cost uh, of 80. So energy recharge definitely looking like a very important uh, substat when building artifacts. So yeah, really quickly just to go over uh, the transfigurations once again. Uh, the ones that you want to go for are definitely Hydro or Electro and this is going to depend on the situation and you know what enemies are fighting. Hydro is definitely the go-to when you're fighting groups of enemies as the increased AoE is going to help you apply Hydro in a wider area. Electro is definitely the go-to when fighting bosses and you need more or elite enemies and you need more single target damage as it's going to apply that Dendro damage faster. So when you cast Traveler's Burst, 
you definitely want to apply either Hydro or Electro as fast as you can. Because remember that enemies can also apply their elements to your burst as well. And it might mess up what you're trying to do. So if there's like a Pyro enemy nearby, try to apply uh, the element that you want as fast as you can. Usually just, you know, queue up the bursts or, you know, the skill right after. Okay, let's move on to their Ascension talents. And the first one is called Verdant Overgrowth. This is the first uh, minor buff that the Traveler provides to their team. Basically, when you're in the AoE of their burst, you're going to gain 6 Elemental Mastery, but this has 10 stacks. So, you know, quick math, 60 Elemental Mastery, uh, which is a nice little boost in damage there. The longer that the burst is on the field, the more potent the buff is. So when once it's been on the field for 6 seconds, that's when it provides the maximum, or uh, sorry, 10 seconds, that's when it provides the maximum uh, stacks of its buff. Next up, we have Verdant Luxury. This is going to turn your Elemental Mastery uh, stats into additional damage for your skill and burst. And it's a nice uh, talent to have, of course. It's not something we're going to heavily invest in. Because again, the important thing is more dendro application and not so much the damage. And for the skill, we're just using it to generate more energy particles. But having it do, you know, a bit more damage is always welcome. Next up, let's talk about weapons. One of the best four star weapons you can give to Traveler uh, in the dendro form is the Favonia Sword. And that is because it provides a whopping 61.3 energy recharge as a substat. That is very huge for us. Um, as well as turning your Traveler into basically a battery, or at least a, like a mini battery for your team. As when you crit with this weapon, you'll provide additional energy um, once every 12 seconds. This is really nice for Traveler themselves, but also just, you know, just overall more energy recharge for your team. If you don't have a Favonius Sword, another weapon that is also acceptable to use is a Sacrificial Sword. This will allow you to use your Elemental Skill twice assuming the weapon procs its effect. Um, this weapon also provides a whopping 61.3% energy recharge as a subset. Another weapon I can recommend is a Ziphos Moonlight. This weapon provides elemental mastery as a subset. However, its weapon effect basically converts uh, your elemental mastery into energy recharge, not just for Traveler, but for your entire team. This is a really good weapon, especially when you have burst cost heavy uh, teammates and it's going to just help you give more energy recharge to them and lastly a free to play friendly option that i can definitely recommend is going to be a sapwood blade now if you get this weapon up to refinement 5 that weapon is going to provide 120 elemental mastery when you pick up the seed uh, to that active character you can also stack this with the ascension one talent that we just went over so overall you're Traveler can provide 180 Elemental Mastery to a teammate. That's actually kind of a big damage increase. Next up, let's talk about artifact sets that work well with Dendro Traveler, with the first one being the Deepwood Memory set. Now, this uh, artifact set on the four-piece effect will reduce your opponent's Dendro resistance by 30% for 8 seconds, and this can occur even when the character is not on the field. So this is basically going to increase your damage for spread teams, hyper bloom, burgeon comps, all gonna benefit greatly from having a deep wood memories uh, user in the team. Just keep in mind, however, that you only need one character on your team to have this. So for example, if you already have Kali or Yao Yao and they already have a really good uh, set for this and they're also on the team, then you actually don't need to have both of uh, your Dendro characters with Deepwood. But for my case, most of the time Dendro Traveler does end up being my only Dendro applicator. That being said, uh, what other artifact sets can you use if you already have someone using a Deepwood? The first set that comes to mind is going to be a Noblesse Oblige. This set is going to provide a 20% attack buff to your entire team when you use your burst. Now this artifact set, keep in mind, is not going to do anything for you if you are using Traveler for Burgeon, Bloom, or a Hyper Bloom team, because those are different types of reactions that don't scale with your attack percentage. They scale off Elemental Mastery. So Noblesse Oblige only if you're doing something like Spread or Aggravate basically quicken teams. Next up, I can recommend a Emblem of Severed Fate because this set provides you energy recharge with two-piece effect. So what you can do is do something like two-piece Emblem of Severed Fate and two-piece Elemental Mastery plus 80, 
for a nice balance between, you know, energy recharge and damage. If you want to increase your traveler's own personal damage, uh, the most a Gilded Dream set or a Flower of Paradise Lost, depending if you're make, putting them on a, a, a Bloom team. But a Gilded Dream set is better just overall because it will give them basically a bunch of elemental mastery as well as attack percentage, depending on the elements of your teammates. If you're looking for something more early game, I can definitely recommend an Instructor set. That's not Instructors. This one. <laughs> An instructor set basically provides 120 elemental mastery, elemental mastery for your entire team for 8 seconds. Now, keep in mind, you can pair this with a sapwood blade, right? And we just got done talking about how at Refinement 5, the weapon's effect gives you 120 elemental mastery. Now you're also giving another 120 ma elemental mastery from your artifact set. And then not to mention, you can get 60 elemental mastery from your ascension talent. If you were to equip Sapwood Blade plus this uh, artifact set plus the maximum stacks from your talent, you're giving 300 elemental mastery to one character, and that is insane, insanely huge damage increase. Especially in Burgeon Hyper Bloom stuff, for sure. So yeah, there's a lot of options when going for artifacts uh, for your traveler. So feel free to pick and choose the one that fits uh, what you're looking for. Now that you've settled on an artifact set, you know, what are the subsets that you're looking for as well as the main stats for the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet? It's pretty easy. As we mentioned before, Energy Recharge is going to be your number one stat. This is a very, very important stat to get. Because again, I know I sound like a broken record saying this, but it has to be stated, it's important. Your burst is how you apply Dendro off field. It's very important that you have that lamp summoned at all times and ready to go. You know, as soon as it expires, you have another lamp ready to go. So you can constantly keep applying that Dendro and constantly keep doing those reactions. That's important. Now for energy recharge requirements, again, it's going to differ depending on what weapons, teammates, and artifact sets you went for, um, but anywhere from 180% to 220% energy recharge is a, quite a wide range that I'm giving you here that you should try to aim for. Again, it's really hard to recommend an exact number because of teammates, but try to get as much energy recharge as you can, especially if Dendro is the uh, Traveler is the only Dendro character on your team. Now, once you meet those energy requirements, you can look for more offensive stats like attack percentage, elemental mastery is going to be nice. Especially if you're running a Ziphos Moonlight, feel free to you know grab some extra elemental mastery. Uh, crit rate and crit damage are nice to have, but you definitely don't need to heavily invest in them like as as you would like a main DPS character. Now for the main stats for the sands, once again, energy recharge. Uh, if you actually feel confident in your traveler's energy recharge and you feel like you don't need this much excess, then you can feel free to opt in for an elemental mastery uh, main stat sands instead. For the goblet, you actually have quite a bit of options here. You can go for attack percentage, dendro damage bonus, or elemental mastery. In my opinion, just pick the one that has the best substats here because again, we're just looking for uh, energy recharge, crit rate, crit damage, and then whatever, you know, offensive stats that isn't the main stat. And for the circlet, you also, again, have a lot of options here. You can go for crit rate, crit damage, or elemental mastery as I have here in this example. Lots of flexibility, uh, basically, when picking main stats for your traveler. The difference between them is mainly going to be up to how your substats roll. Next up, let's talk about constellations for Traveler. And now, unlike any other character in the game, you can get these, right? These are You can C6 any element of Traveler just by playing the game. You don't need to pull on the banner. You don't have to spend gems. Like You can, you can grind for this by doing a mixture of both the main story as well as exploring uh, Sumeru uh, for Dendro Traveler's case, you can explore Sumeru and get the rewards there. But let's talk about what the actual constellations do. So the first one is called Symbiotic Creeper. It's going to make your elemental skill regenerate 3.5 energy for Traveler. This is an amazing constellation for Traveler. Again, it's just going to help reduce those energy recharge needs by a bit. You know, 3.5 isn't a lot, but luckily the elemental skill does have a low cooldown. So really, really nice constellation there. Um, for your your burst uptime. 
C2 is called Green Resilience, and this is going to increase your lamp's duration by 3 seconds. Also a welcome uh, constellation here. So again, you have more time to build up your Dendro Burst uh, energy back, and then you have even more energy, or uh, sorry, you, you have even more Dendro application uh, while the burst is active. Overall, nice constellation. Three and five are, of course, going to increase your skill and burst, respectively. Now, again, it's nice, it's welcome, but you don't have, like, you don't need it. Need it. It's not like, oh my goodness, now that you have C3 and C5, it's, it's just nice to have. Uh, C4 is called Triaco uh, Grass. This is going to make it so that when your lamp gets any transfiguration, it doesn't matter what element it is, it's going to automatically gain five stacks of your passive talent that gives you elemental mastery. So you're immediately going to have 50 EM instead of having it, you have to ramp it up normally, right? You have to wait six seconds and then you get the max um, buffs. But with this constellation, you get it much faster. So you're going to get 50 instantly and you just have to wait a second and you're already at maximum buff. Saves a lot of time and it just means more consistently high damage. C6 is going to be called Withering Aggregation. This is going to increase your Dendro damage bonus when you're under the effect of the lamp. However, it's also going to give you another 12% damage bonus when you apply an element to it. So if you apply Hydro to it, you're going to get 12% Dendro and 12% Hydro damage. Now keep in mind, damage like this does nothing for Hyper Bloom, Quick Bloom, Neela Bloom, or Burgeon comps because those are scaled with Elemental Mastery and your character's level. This talent, or sorry, this constellation is better suited for Spread or Aggravate teams since those do get affected by the damage, increased damage that this constellation provides. So just keep that in mind. If you are using Traveler with an, in an Aggravate team, you want to apply that Electro to your lamp as quickly as you can for the uh, increased damage. All right, let's talk team comps for your Denjo Traveler. And to be honest, as I said before, it's whatever you want to build, whatever Denjo team you want to build and whatever teammates you have for it. Traveler will be able to fit in just in in just about any team comp you want. So if you're going for aggravate, I have her in a hyper bloom team here, but if you don't have, you know, the teammates or you're not going for hyper bloom team, you're going for Burgeon, you can do that as well. So here's Traveler in a Burgeon comp if you wanted to do it like that. Here's another example of a aggravate team. Ignore the team name on the bottom left. Um, but if you wanted to aggravate you can do it as well. And we also have Yao Yao here. Uh, don't forget, having two Dendro characters in your team will give you the Dendro Resonance, which basically gives you 80 Elemental Mastery once you complete the requirements. So you get 50 Elemental Mastery straight up. Then you get another 30, depending on what uh, Elemental Reaction you do, as long as it's a Dendro-related one. So if you do Bloom, you do Quicken, you get 30 Elemental Mastery. Then once you do aggravate, hyper bloom, spread, etc., etc., you get another 20 elemental mastery. So overall, you will get 100 EM just for having two dendro in the team and just doing your dendro uh, reactions. So all these teams that we've showcased so far are definitely viable and they're going to be strong. Dendro Traveler is a character that I use even in the Spiral Abyss. All right, we are basically back once again in my favorite domain to showcase these characters in action, or at least Traveler. So we're going to just do a basic Hyper Bloom team. And we're going to start with uh, Traveler's Burst. Then we want Jincho's Burst to apply Hydro to the Lamp. And then you can see the AoE increased, and now we're just doing Hyper Bloom damage. And that's basically it because, again, and then we're getting the energy ready for the next rotation. But that's that's basically the rotation for Hyper Bloom. And that's basically how we're using Traveler. It's really simple. There's, there's really not a lot to it. You place the burst, maybe get some energy back. You know, you're going to transfigure the burst with Hydro and then do the Electro again. And we are just deleting everything 
pretty fast. Now if we were fighting a boss, the rotation would change a little bit just to go for Electro on the Transfiguration first. And there we go, we're building up burst again, gonna place this. My Jincho is very close to dying, that's not good, <laughs> but we're okay, we're okay. And then we're just going to give ourselves a shield. Pretty much just uh, wrecking everything in here. Gonna do that real fast. I really don't want my Jincho to die. Let me, uh, let me get the heals. Oops. I think that one, I transfigured the burst with Electro. That's okay. No, I think I still got it with Hydro. I think this is the increased AoE. So yeah, we can see the, uh, the burst goes off for quite a bit. And, I mean, that domain was basically a cinch. And I didn't have any real trouble there, except Jingcho getting really low there. Let me heal him. But yeah, that, that's basically how you use Traveler. They're just a great off-field dead applicator, and you know, it doesn't have to be Hyper Bloom. I could have easily done this same showcase with Burgeon, Aggravate, Spread. Uh, just Again, just use whatever team you want to use them in and, you know, whatever teammates you, you have available. A couple of final words on Dendro Traveler before we wrap this guide up because they are sort of a very unique character, right? Unlike uh, any other character in Genshin Impact. And that is because with Fontaine around the corner, you know, at least around the time of recording this video, you know, I don't look at leaks for Genshin. I, I have no idea what Fontaine is like or anything like that. But, you know, what we do, well, I do know is that, well, we are going to get a Hydro Traveler, right? And I have no idea if Hydro Traveler is going to be a good character. They could be. Could be a, a good healer, could be a shielder, could be an off-field DPS again. You know, I have no idea. There's two ways to go about it, right? Like, if Hydro Traveler ends up being, well, bad, well then, hey, you know, this is no matter for us. We already have a nicely built Denjo Traveler that's good in a lot of teams. No need to switch. And we're pretty much going to be fine, right? But if Hydro Traveler ends up actually being really good and really helpful, and you know, who's to say if they're going to be meta or not? Well, unless Hoyoverse releases also artifact loadouts and stuff like that for characters, it is going to be kind of painful, you know, having to switch around a lot. In Traveler's case, you know, if you do go swapping to Hydro, you're probably going to have to do a new artifact set, maybe a new weapon depending on their kit. And of course, you're going to have to re-level their talents. That's also very, you know, tedious and it's going to cost you a lot of resin and stuff like that. What I can tell you right now is that Denjo Traveler has been amazing for me. Again, it's just been so helpful on so many teams, helped me beat the Abyss, just helps in general when building team comps. It's just a very solid character. If you do end up getting more Denjo characters, say Baiju gets a rerun, Kirara comes back in the in the banner, or you get her on a standard pull, uh, etc., etc., you know maybe then it would be okay to swap off your Denjo Traveler. But I still think they're very solid, and I, it's going to be hard for me to want to switch Traveler to a different element. Basically, they really need to make the future elements really strong. So I guess we'll have to see what the future holds for Traveler. But until then, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions or if I miss something about the character, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer you. With that being said, good luck on building your characters. I hope your teams do well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.